Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for well another uh, edition of So You Want to Be a Video Podcaster. It's the second in the series that I'm doing. Um, we're going to be talking about web hosting and video hosting. Um, so first of all, a web page, man. You got to have a web page. So what are you going to do? Well, you got to buy what's called a URL. I don't know if you remember what URL stands for. Maybe I'll put something in the lower third that says what it stands for. Uh, something, something, look up, universal... Reference lookup. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. I'll look it up later. Uh, hopefully, it's the same as your brand name because that's the point in getting your brand name. Avoid similar sim, similar names to something else. You know. Yeah. Pot meet the keller ke kettle. Yeah. We already talked about that last episode about how I branded and how I named all my stuff. Um, also, look to buy alternative URLs. Um, maybe not as soon as you do it, but you know, try to do it. So, for my case, um, I have. Uh, 1337 wine. Then I also bought L E E T wine because 1337 spells leet. And then since it's a quote TV show, I also bought 1337winetv.com and leetwinetv.com. Now what I did not do, <clears throat> and that doesn't mean you can go out and buy it because, well, I don't really care. I mean, I do. Don't do it. Um, but they're more expensive. Like if I, if someone, if I, I haven't gone out and bought leetwine.tv and 1337wine.tv because they're, they're definitely more expensive than the dot coms. Um, I mean, you got dot org, dot net, and all this other stuff. I mean, you can do that, but I mean, honestly, if you're first, first starting out, unless you're really concerned that you have like the best name in the world and someone's gonna steal it, you're probably okay without doing the dot orgs and dot nets because you're really, you're really, you're a dot com. If your dot org is supposed to be a charity, .NET is supposed to be you are a internet service provider. Now that used to be kind of followed way back in the dark days of the internet. Now it's just like, well, if the .com is taken, I'll just take one of the other ones. Um, anyway, so you definitely want to you definitely want to get that. Um, as far as um, who who should you buy it from? You know, who who should be your registrar? Um, as, as it's called. Um, honestly probably any of them that you want, whatever, you, whichever one you get the best deal at. I use GoDaddy. Why? Because I've been using GoDaddy for years. That was what I started with. Um, I was able to get, you know, I was listening to a, I, I would listen to a few podcasts on the Twit Network. That's kind of one of the inspirations for my podcast. Um, and they always had the, these, uh, and I used to also watch, ah, um, um, oh, dang it, Kevin Rose and Alex Albrecht and Dignation. Used to watch that one. That wasn't quite. It was a podcast, but kind of. Um, and, I mean, yeah, they made it a podcast too. But they also they always had like these codes, discount codes for GoDaddy, and you get you know web dot coms for a decent price. At least for the first you know in two years you bought it, and then they went to regular price. Um, so just whatever you whatever you have, um, and then the standard the standard thing is for two years, but you can buy it for I think up to ten years is the maximum you can buy an initial website name for um but if you buy multiple names you can you can make it so they all renew the same year um they all maybe renew the same day uh, or if you want to like stagger things out like buy one for one year and then buy you know then when it renews renew it for like two or three years or whatever so you can do that um they're not you know each url is not terribly expensive for a two-year things like GoDaddy, the normal price is around well, i think i end up spending around 40 bucks total now why why is it 40 bucks and not less because you're like, it should be less, Mark, because I use anonymous, uh, I anonymize my uh, account, anonymous registration. Why would I do that? Well, unless you have a P.O. box or you really are a legitimate like brick and mortar business and everything runs through your address. If I had registered my, any, all my URLs 
um, without using anonymous registration, then you would be able to get my name, my address, my phone number, and my email address that I used to do all of that. Um, well, my name, you obviously know my name. Um, my email address isn't too difficult to get. Um, neither, you know, if you really, really, really wanted to search uh, public records, you could probably find my address, but it makes it more difficult, okay? Um, what's called a who is, you can look up all the information about any URL and you can see all their registration information unless they anonymized it. And that's what I did. Um, it's just to help protect me. And I mean, not that I'm going to have throngs of fans knocking down my door. I'm not. But, you know, that's th something to think about. It's just a little bit of extra privacy. It's there. So you should use it. And it costs, like, I think, like 10 bucks for two years or maybe it's eight bucks a year. I forgot. To me, it's worth it. I just, I just automatically anonymize. Pick a web host. All right, so you're gonna have a website. So you get your name. You don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to have a website immediately. You just, you just, you just claimed the name on the internet. It's like having a vacant lot you haven't built a house on yet. Okay. So pick a web host. I picked something that I used. I use WordPress now. I originally used Squarespace. Squarespace is great. I mean, you have to buy the URL separately. And then you use Squarespace and they have all these templates and, you know, they manage everything for you. It's awesome. But I wanted a few extra things that Squarespace couldn't do. So I looked out there and I saw, well, WordPress was the next easiest thing without actually doing all the coding myself, which again, way back in the dark ages of the internet kids, I actually coded in HTML. No CSS frames, iframes, I did that. So yeah, I, I am way behind anything that, that the internet that you can do on a web page. So WordPress was the next thing that I saw that was good, that was a plug and play type of thing. So you can, you know, host your Word, WordPress installation on, you know, pick a, you use GoDaddy or you use your registrar a lot of times to be your, your, your web host. Um, and you can install this stuff, but then you have to manage it. You have to make sure it's updated and, you know, there's a lot of other things that back end stuff that you have to be responsible for. A, Word, a managed WordPress hosting company like Pressable, and there's other ones out there. I think Blue Gator is one of them, and I forgot who. I'll, I'll put some links down. Um, they do all that administrative stuff for you. They make sure your WordPress installation is up to date. They, they handle any type of, um, uh, depending on what, what plugins you use, they can help you with attacks and people trying to log in, all kind of nefarious type of stuff, right? Um, and you just have to plug and play what you want. And then you buy themes and all this kind of stuff. So it's it's very flexible. Um, I'm not necessarily a WordPress expert. I just know what I do and I'm, I do that well, um, but it's very limited to what I do. Um, let's see. Oh, no matter what you use as, a, as your hosting company, make sure that the plan that you have um, allows you enough bandwidth slash visitors for the foreseeable future. Um, like mine is, I think 50,000 visitors a month across all the, all the URLs that I can have with, with Pressable. I can have five accounts. I can have five different websites. I really only use the one. Um, I was using videowinereviews.com to host the actual podcast videos but we'll go into in another a few a later episode. We'll go into what I do now. Um, so that that website still exists, um, but I'll probably take that down here pretty soon because I don't really ever use it anymore. Um, and then I'll take that particular URL and I'll make sure that it auto directs to Elite Wine or 1337wine.com, which is another little trick. So when you have multiple URLs, um, it's not you have to have multiple websites. You can tell your usually through your registrar. Um, and in, in, in conjunction with your, your hosting company, you say, Hey, if somebody types in, in this case, leetwine, leetwine.com, L E E T wine.com, it auto directs or redirects to, I think it's called a 301 code in, on, in internet parlance, um, or HT, whatever. Yeah. Web, web parlance, parlance, whatever parlance. Um, it redirects to 1337wine.com. That's the, the master or that's the main URL that everything goes to. So I have multiple, all those ones that I bought, all redirect to 1337wine.com. Um, but you want to make sure you have enough bandwidth or, or visitor bandwidth or whatever to handle it. Now, when you first start out, you're probably not going to get a lot of visitors. But if you grow, you want to make sure that whatever plan you're on right now 
is allows you to grow to a point where, okay, maybe you go to the next plan. Um, and then some plans are kind of like, hey, if you have a spike one month, they're, they're, they're cool with it. And other times like, hey man, we're going to, they'll just automatically bump you up. I think Pressable does that. If I, if I, I don't, I'm not saying if I went up at 50,000 in one, they would automatically bump me to the next level. But let's say I had a big spike one month, they would automatically bump me up to that. Um, I probably would stay at that. I would have to probably talk to them if my traffic went back down to under 50,000. Um, let's see, Google Analytics. Um, you definitely want to um, have some type of analytics on your web page. Google is kind of the standard, but I also use something called Stat Counter. I've been using it for years, so it kind of has kept it. And it's a free, uh, it's, a, it's free like Google. But Stat Counter, you can also pay, I think it's like maybe five bucks a month, or maybe it's a little bit more. I don't know. I don't use the pro version, um, but it gives you, it basically it gives you a more, uh, a longer or, or, or a larger um, uh, number of entries. I think, I think I cap out at 500 entries per month and um, log this thing. You, know, you have a even bigger log. But since I don't have a, I don't have a ton, ton of, of visitors on the web page, I don't really need it. And Google, Google Analytics also helps. I use both because they both kind of give you different things. I mean, the same information, but some things they, they do better than the other. Video hosting. This is big. Video is hard, first of all, and video is expensive. Um, data, data wise, is expensive. Audio, dude, it's like, it's like peanuts. It's like pennies compared to video. Okay. Video is like diamonds and, um, Audio podcasting is like coal, okay? Um, it's way cheaper to execute all of it all around, including hosting your video, hosting your uh, files. So audio podcasts are usually very small files compared to video, so they don't take as much bandwidth, which means whatever service you're using to host your audio podcast, um, the actual data file, um, the, the bandwidth you're gonna use is relatively low, and so it, the, the cost is usually much cheaper. Video, on the other hand, um, like, so the very first episode of this, um, the computer said it was 11 gigabytes. Now that's gonna get whittled down after I do all the editing and make things look nice and I change some settings in there. Um, it's gonna get it down to probably, it was 20 minutes. It'll probably be under a gig, a gig or less, probably. I'm, I mean, I could easily make a, a gig and a half or two gig file. But, you know, when I make it a smaller file, I'm not really affecting the video quality that much. At least not for, my kind of podcast this is not broadcast TV and we're not talking cinema quality stuff. So, um, uh, but video files, I mean, 20, my 20 minute, 10 to 20 minute episodes are anywhere from 700 megabytes to upwards to two gigabytes on average. Um, I haven't made them bigger. Um, but then when I changed up some things, uh, which I go, I'll go through in another show. I made a conscious effort to kind of make, make the video files smaller. Um, so yeah, you definitely want to be cognizant of your video size. YouTube, I already mentioned it last episode, but YouTube, get your videos on YouTube. It's the biggest, they're the big dog. You can go to Vimeo and all the other ones if you want, but YouTube's free. And you can now upload the the longest you ever want. I mean, I've seen, I've seen videos that really aren't videos that are like 20 hours long or whatever. Um, it's, it's really just like, it's usually like some, it's music or just like noise and like, like a static picture um, or like, you know, rotation of pictures. It's free. It used to be you had limits, you know, you had time limits and size limits, file size limits. Now, pretty much, at least under, from my standpoint, because I'm a creator studio, so you may have to get that type of account, but in general, as far as I know, it's it's fair game. Vimeo, last time I was on it, like I still, my, I have my account still, my video still on there, but I haven't posted anything to Vimeo in years. Um, it was like $50, I think a year. I think it was 50 a year. So it wasn't terrible. Um, and I got, you know, it, it gave me more um, larger file sizes and more upload per month as far as how much how much I'm uploading than the free. You, have, you can get a free account. That's basically what mine is now. Um, I don't see the advantage to Vimeo over YouTube necessarily, but I know there's a lot of businesses that use Vimeo. Their site's nice and their player's nice and all that, and they can brand it. I think they can earn, they can do like earn money on Vimeo too. You can earn money on YouTube, but dude, it takes like millions of views to get it and YouTube changed how it does things earlier this year and you have to have like I think a thousand followers something like that thousand subscribers I'm sorry to be eligible for um, uh, revenue and I'm nowhere near a thousand I think I'm like a couple hundred 
I mean, dude, I've had I've had videos on YouTube for years. I've yet to get a check. You know, my, it's set for a minimum. Once you get $100 in revenue, with Google cuts you a check. I've never gotten a check. So if that tells you anything, I've had tens of thousands of views of all of my videos and I still haven't gotten any money. I think I think the last I looked a few months ago, right before they pulled the plug, I think I was at like 12 bucks. So um, don't think that you're on YouTube, you're gonna become rich. You gotta have millions of views on multiple videos and then you can make a living at it. Um, also, no matter what you may have read on the internet, you cannot use YouTube as your feed for the video podcast itself. I'll just stop there. Um, your web host might be able, like Pressable was my web, was my was my host for the video files for quite a while. Um, and then earlier this year, they imposed a 500 megabyte limit, file size limit, without telling anybody, they just did it. And I figured it out because I was uploading videos and I was like, what's going on? It kept stopping around 500 megabytes and I sent in a, a support ticket and they, they're great. Their service is awesome, by the way. I got a not quite immediate response, but I got it back like very shortly afterwards. And they were like, well, let me look into it. Then they called, then they emailed again and said, yeah, we have this new limit. And by the way, yeah, what you're using the site for, that's not what we're designed for. And I was kind of like, well, duh. But my friends who work there, one still works there, um, but the one who doesn't work there anymore was like, when I was having all these problems because the, the service I was using was bought out and then was shut down, um, I was like, well, I'm not going to be on YouTube. I mean, I'm not going to be on iTunes anymore. That's how you podcast, right? Trust me, my podcast numbers aren't, I mean, actually my podcast numbers are pretty good now. Um, but most of my numbers a long, long time ago were through TiVo. And I have no idea if TiVo, if even TiVo still, you can get me on TiVo anymore. But you can see me on YouTube through TiVo. So I'm not really worried about it. Um, anyway. I was lamenting that I wouldn't be able to be on iTunes anymore because there's aren't a lot of video wine podcasts that are in current production on YouTube. I mean, on iTunes. I think there is one now or has been for a little while, but for a long time, I was the only one on there from the United States. Um, anyway, so um, uh, your, your web host provider might allow it because I mine technically was unlimited bandwidth an unlimited file size. But I was the one guy that, at least on file size for sure, and then maybe bandwidth a little bit. So I said, look, I might be using this much bandwidth every month or every week. You know, and that adds up this much a month. And they're like, that's fine. So I was the guy that messes up for everybody else. That's why we can't have nice things. Um, Podbean, this is who I actually use. So I went to, I felt that they had the best deal in running is $39 a month. It is unlimited bandwidth. Um, it is not quite unlimited. It's basically unlimited upload, but your file size can't be bigger than I think three gigabytes. Um, and when you first do stuff, like I was transferring a lot of stuff over, they gave me like a little bit of like 30 day, like reprieve on, on some limits so I could move some stuff over. I didn't move everything over because well, if you subscribe to the podcast feed, you, you know that there's only 26 episodes ever in, in the feed. I didn't migrate all 26. I just migrated, I think, like 13 or as much as I could just to be reasonable. So I had a migration over there. Um, so they were good. They were like, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll help you out for that first month. But then after that, you're you're stuck with, I think, three gigabytes per file size. But I, if I remember right, it's unlimited upload and then also download for, for the feed. Um, then you get some analytics with it too. Um, and they're pretty good. I mean, actually they're a little bit better than the next company I'm going to talk to as far as telling where you got your stuff, uh, which is Blueberry. So Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y, they have a WordPress plugin and I bought their stats pack because they also host videos. But when I first, when I first started looking at them, they're way expensive for what I have for video. I mean, they're, they're really more of an audio podcast. Podbean does audio podcasting, but they also cater to video a little bit better than just about anyone else out there. Um, but Blueberry, they can do video. Um, and you know, they have a very strong community and then they're, they're, they're a very well known and they do a really good job. And they also had like for $5 a month, they could track your stats. Basically today, here's my, here's my podcast feed, which that's coming here in a little bit. Um, what that is. And they track that 
and you, they, they tell you, you know, who, who down, not who, but what, what country somebody lived in, what was downloaded, how many times it was downloaded, all this kind of stuff. So you have some good stats. Up until like really recently, as far as when I recorded this, um, I still was getting downloads, which is weird because it's like I did switch the feed, but some of the old pod catchers or, who, or however they, people subscribe to my podcast still had that feed. So hopefully they've converted over to the current feed, but that's why like, I'm, I'm going to take down that website pretty soon. Um, let's see others. Um, you can consider, uh, I looked at Libsyn podcast garden. I didn't really like their, 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 um, their pay structure. Um, and they also have a little, they're a little more limiting on the file size and the uploads and downloads. I think they all had unlimited download, but some of the uploads was a little bit good. There was another one I thought I had set for never. Uh, there's another one called Castos. Never heard of them. I was looking up. And apparently you can use Amazon S3 and Google Drive. Technically you can do it. It's kind of techy and kind of difficult. Um, Amazon charges based upon your bandwidth. It's really cheap on a per byte or maybe it's per megabyte basis. I can't remember. It's like, you know, fractions of a cent. But if you have a two gigabyte file size and you get like, oh, I don't know, inside of a month, a couple hundred that's it, a couple of hundred downloads, it starts getting a little expensive and you might be, and that's just the one, that's just the one. Maybe if you do four, four a month, you could be hitting more than $40 a month. It's, S3 is really, really, I mean, audio podcasts is, is actually good because it's pretty cheap compared to some of the other places. Um, you don't get all the analytics and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really kind of a roll your own thing. Um, but Amazon F3, S3 is really more for like content, like, you know, you're going to, you, the pictures for your website are going to live there, or you're going to use it as like a, a, a glacial backup, you know, backup, backup, you know, worst case scenario backup. I mean, it's really meant for like really just storing data, not really streaming, but it's apparently pretty quick to stream video. Google Drive, you apparently can use your Google Drive for this. Um, and it's free, but you may have download limits. Um, and there was nothing that I saw on Google Drive that gives you statistics on your downloads. Um, maybe it's there, but I didn't see it. Um, Google is sometimes hard to find exactly what's doing until you actually sign up for something. And I wasn't going to sign up for it because I don't need it. I mean, I have Google Drive on one account, but I wasn't going to like, I mean, that's how I kind of delved into it. I'm like, uh, it's not really for me anyway. Um, let's see, RSS feed validation. So what's an RSS feed? Uh, really simple syndication is what RSS stands for. Um, if you if you're way back in the day, you had a news reader. That's what it was. It was an RSS feed. You you know you read news from I don't know the New York Times or from Joe's website, you know, or whatever. Well, iTunes Player is basically an RSS reader for podcasts because that's what that's what they use. Um, the actual music you listen to isn't this isn't a pot isn't like an rss feed that i know of but here's the, here's the here's the uh, secret kids itunes does not store anything doesn't store the music that you listen that you bought doesn't store the audio podcast that you listen to doesn't store the actual video files what it does is it takes uh, at least for the podcasts anything that's streaming including internet radio, which you can, you know, Apple has this, oh, we have, uh, you know, Apple radio, dude, iTunes has internet radio for free. You don't have to pay anything. Now it doesn't necessarily work great on the iOS on your mobile devices, but on your computer works great. Um, anyway, um, so it takes a feed and that feed is, goes back to wherever your files live. Like in my case, it's Podbean. Okay. So it's like, you know, HTTP colon slash slash XML something podbean.com slash this slash that blah 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 and it's and, and then you know the actual file when I upload the podbean it's like okay this is the episode and I make it all happen happen and then it inserts it to the RSS feed and they do all the complicated stuff for you you just have to upload and post um, same with anybody else including I would say Amazon S3 and Google Drive but it might be a little more difficult to do that um, Anyway, so you, that's what you have to do. Um, so you have to make sure that that RSS feed, so like I said, Podbean, they provide the feed URL, the, the actual link for you. And most of these places are going to create a feed that is quote iTunes compatible. iTunes is what you want to get on first. There are other places that host podcasts or, or 
do the same thing as, as iTunes, and I don't really worry about them because honestly, almost all of them are audio only or are audio dominant. So video, I'm not really worried about. Um, but so to do that, if you don't already have an Apple ID, which I know a ton of people do because they, if they have iTunes, if they, they've bought stuff on iTunes, then they have an Apple ID. But if you don't have one, you need to create one. And then you'll log into something called iTunes Connect. It used to be a little more different, maybe a little more complicated in the past, but now it's called itunesconnect.apple.com. There'll be a link down there, be a link underneath here in the show notes on my website. Um, follow the instructions, it's pretty simple. Um, it can take a day or two for them to approve your um, podcast. Um, but I, rem I remember being pretty quick and then whenever I had to change the feed, it's usually the same day they, they acknowledge, you get an email saying your, your feed's been changed. Um, and this is also just you know, how you manage your, your, um, your feed in iTunes. Uh, make sure you include a link on your website. Links above here to click the links above to from me up and or subscribe to the podcast. Um, so you can do that. Um, and then whatever hosting you're hosting you're using, there's usually some type of plugin or whatever you can find that, that can link it to an iTunes, put the iTunes logo, or whatever on there. Um, alternative podcast services. Um, I didn't really look, I didn't look them. Well, I mean, like Libsyn and all that. Um, you can, I mean, they host it and they also are like places where people like can listen to them, download them. Um, Spotify is another one, you know, um, and only, you know, Spotify is really not a good video uh, podcast place. I mean, in fact, I don't think you can do any video, but make sure you use something that you do video on. Um, let's see, they can usually subscribe to it and they, a lot of times they have a mobile app so you can listen or watch your podcast. Podbean has, you know, a, uh, an app for mobile app. And if I want to watch my stuff on there, I can. Um, and then be aware that some other podcast service, yeah, be aware that some other podcast service audio only. So you may not be able to do video at all. Um, if you use the suggestions I have, which I'll have links again underneath uh, on my website, the links will be there. I, I don't ever put the links on YouTube to get, to get you to the website. I don't know why. I mean, I have some ads on the website, but I don't ever make any money at it. Once you want to do backblaze, that's what I use for my online backup. They're pretty awesome. I think it's five bucks a month. It's unlimited storage. Seriously. I use it. I got, I got, I got like, I think a one and a half terabytes of uploaded stuff. Seriously. It takes forever though when you have a lot of stuff, but you can tell it to um, only do it when you're sleeping, basically, when you're not using the internet. All right, so uh, that's going to do it for this episode. Man, I'm glad I didn't do it all as one episode because this would be like a three hour episode. Um, so click the links above to frame me up as always. Click the links below to um, check out everything I've talked about before. Um, you can hit the, the donate button over here. I didn't say that last episode. The PayPal is actually kind of maybe down there a little bit. I got to scroll down probably. Um, if you want to donate to the show, Remember, I had surgery, yes, I have really good insurance, but there's a few out-of-network costs I might have to be responsible for. My insurance company is working with them to get it down to a reasonable amount, or maybe they're going to take care of it. I don't know. But if you'd like to send me a little bit of money to help with that, that would be outstanding. Or just because, hey, Mark, you provide really great content, great information. I love your videos. I love your wine stuff. I love when you go travel. You can do that. You can do it because of that, too. Honestly, that's really why I want you to do it. I don't want to be begging you for money uh, to pay for my insurance, uh, pay for my health care. Anyway, um, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, thank you for all for stopping by, and we'll see you again next time.